Hello everyone, this is Ohio Dan, finally back with a new video after being absent from YouTube for a few months now. I wanted to make a video about the so-called conservative or anti-feminist Nawalt and the competing views about how to assess these women who come out as anti-feminist and, and start making content along those lines uh, for the men's community or for anybody that will listen to it and my views on kind of the shortcomings that we have in how to view these women one way or the other. So in the manosphere, there tends to be two competing views from what I can see in general for how to perceive women who identify as conservative, libertarian, or some other form of anti-feminist. One view is to label nearly all of these women as chameleons who want positive male attention. As more men identify feminism as hostile to their goals, according to this view, some women will attempt to distance themselves from this ideology by telling men essentially what they want to hear, by trying to give men what they want and say the right thing so that feminism doesn't prevent them from finding the relationship partner that they're looking for, basically, according to this view. The other common view is to consider many of these women as Nawalts who are able to analyze our current situation and develop political views with greater fairness in mind toward men. Both of these views, the idea that all these anti-feminist women or the vast majority of them, nearly all of them, are just basically full of it. They're just chameleons and they don't really know anything that, from a man's perspective. And they're just basically trying to be on men's good side once again. And the opposing view that, well, these women really get it. They're the good women. They're the Nawaltz. You know, they're going to fight for men. I think both of these views are incomplete and really oversimplistic. And I think that they fail to analyze the motivating factors behind women identifying themselves as some form of conservative or anti-feminist or anything along those lines. So it's true that many of the women who've decided to make content about men's issues are pretty much chameleons. And you, you can really spot these women without a whole lot of effort once you kind of have that skepticism. Once you, especially as a man, you look at it, you assess whether the woman actually understands things from a man's perspective at all or not. You can tell when these women are just regurgitating the same topics that they've heard men discuss in the past. They're just basically saying what men want to hear, but they don't show any sort of overall understanding of the ideas behind what they're saying. They're contradicting themselves. They're making statements based on emotion, or they're based on really just, like I say, not analyzing the topic at hand, but instead just basically just saying that they're anti-feminist or saying that they're conservative, really not doing anything to back that up and not saying anything that shows any sort of independent analysis. I also think that if a large number of these women weren't chameleons, if the vast majority weren't chameleons, then we would see or we would have seen women prior to the current year coming out as anti-feminist. We would have seen women expressing that, you know, they don't support first wave feminism or second wave feminism or third wave feminism. It's only now that we've gotten to the final wave of feminism that you see all these women coming out and saying that, well, we don't support this because men are being treated unfairly or it's not sustainable or whatever the case may be. But again, there's usually a, a very uh, large uh, hole where the analysis is supposed to be uh, when they make their points. They may contradict themselves. In a lot, a lot of cases, these women really are just saying what men want to hear. And so a, a good number, I would say the majority of women who are claiming to be anti-feminist probably fit into this category because you know, otherwise, where were these women just a few years ago when men were starting to walk away? Why is it that it's just now that... Women can't find marriage partners. Women can't convince men to do what they used to do as far as fulfilling their traditional roles and as far as just basically dedicating themselves to a wife and children. They realize that they can't find that anymore, and so now all of a sudden they're anti-feminist. 
So these women are chameleons because they really usually, like I said, they usually don't know what they're talking about beyond just a very superficial understanding. And where were they just a few years ago? It's not a coincidence that since feminism has become more toxic and more men are walking away, now all of a sudden more of these women are coming out as anti-feminists. That's not a coincidence. So that's a major factor. But again, I believe that you can spot chameleons from a mile away if you know what you're looking at because they're not going to say anything original. They're not going to do any analysis usually because they really don't believe what they're saying. They just want men to like them again. On the other hand, though, there are women who genuinely consider themselves to be conservative or libertarian or some other form of anti-feminist, and they understand their belief system at least to a large extent. They can express why it is that men are walking away rather than just shaming men, rather than just having the approach of, well, these men are the problem. You know, they need to man up. They need to not be so bitter or they need to, uh, you know, just do what they've always done for women just because. There are women out there who understand and, and can show that they can do the analysis, at least to a large extent, over why it is that men are walking away from marriage traditional expectations from society, and so forth. And there are a number of women who fall into this category. They do understand why men are walking away. They can see things from an abstract enough perspective that it's not just about them in their minds. They can actually you know, realize that men are going to do things based on incentive, and they see why it is that things are not working with a feminist system that basically doesn't provide that incentive for men to continue to be part of to be part of traditional relationships and so there are women who really are conservative they're not chameleons in the sense that they're pretending to be something they're not they really do believe that a conservative way of doing things or small government policies or having laws that are actually fair toward men they do believe in those things so are these women the waltz well, the case that I want to make in, these, in this video is that once you begin to probe these women, and I'm talking about the women who do understand men's issues, and they do understand why feminism is a really negative thing for society and for men in general. Once you start to probe them about their beliefs, you actually get into a conversation with a lot of these women, or you see how they form their opinions in the first place, you know, why they actually are conservative or libertarian or anti-feminist, you'll find that many of them will engage you when you get into any sort of debate, when you get any so into any sort of discussion of the actual topics at hand, many of them will engage you in the same fallacious emotional nonsense as your average feminist women. And when I first experienced this, I didn't understand it. It made no sense. How can these women, on one hand, really understand what men are doing and they, and they get men's issues in some form, or they have, at the very least, an anti-feminist worldview, but then, on the other hand, be so quick to use shaming language or to make emotion-based arguments that ignore pretty solid facts that should be obvious uh, in reality? So many of these women, like I say, they're not chameleons in that they understand and earnestly support anti-feminist views or conservative ideology, but they're also not the waltz. While they may have rejected feminism for a, a variety of reasons, it is often because the feminist ideology doesn't suit the life goals that they've established. In many cases, Again, when you actually get into having discussions with these women or you observe their behavior from an objective kind of neutral point of view, you'll see that where their beliefs contradict a desired outcome that they have, they will resort to the same tactics as their feminist counterparts to achieve whatever it is that they want. Now, I have a few examples of this from what I've experienced and from what I've seen just over the past few years, for the most part, uh, with these women who really are conservative. They really are libertarian or anti-feminist, but their kind of overall set of values and, and the way they think is really no different than an average feminist woman. 
So my first example involves a female who was basically a friend in college. Not really a good friend, but I think at the time I was pretty much attracted to her. And so, you know, I tried to keep in touch with her during that time. And this, of course, was way back when I didn't understand any of the things about what men face in relationships. I basically just didn't have any red pill knowledge. I was completely blue pilled. And she had posted, and this hasn't been that long ago, on her social media that she believes that companies that make medicine for people who are allergic to bees, so if they get stung, they don't have that allergic reaction. They can basically use that to avoid basically going into shock and all the things that happen when you get stung by a bee if you're allergic to them. She had said that basically the company should be forced to sell that product at a low enough price to be affordable for most people. In other words, their intellectual property rights shouldn't exist. Well, someone challenged her because this girl is a conservative libertarian girl. She's generally for supposedly small government. And that is her overall ideology when it comes to other issues that don't affect her directly. But she would make a claim that, oh, this, this kind of drug, this kind of medicine needs to be made for everyone. And I had another libertarian guy who was sort of my friend as well, he just, another guy that I just knew through some of the classes that I took, and he basically challenged her and says, doesn't this seem kind of inconsistent with the other views that you have? And her response was, well, I don't want to die, so... And that was the end of it. You know, she doesn't want to die, so it's perfectly okay to be inconsistent and to not really stick with your views when it doesn't get you what you want. And of course, this is also a really good example of solipsism. This is a really good example of women thinking that they are the center of everything around them. And so it makes sense to contradict yourself when survival or when what you feel like you need is at stake. And so this is the feminine kind of thinking that you would get from a feminist. It's just that she has a different ideology or a different kind of political worldview, but when it comes to issues that actually affect her, then all that matters is her getting what she wants. And so if women who are supposedly against feminism or have an ideology that opposes feminism will do this, you know, what makes you think that they don't do this with the men in their own lives? What makes you think that it's not just all about them and that's why they have a conservative view to begin with? It's because as long as that ideology works, they'll continue to use it. But then when there's an exception to the rule that affects them in a certain way, they'll abandon that ideology and use emotional thinking to justify what they want. The second example that I want to use is kind of a brief confrontation that I had a couple years back with a libertarian YouTuber. And I'm not going to say who she is. She's somewhat famous or popular, but not extremely so. But in essence, you know, I, I she had basically made a big post on her social media about how her private life is private and she's basically offended and doesn't like it when men will just ask to marry her, even jokingly, and stuff like that. And that, you know, it's none of their business what, what's actually going on. Now, I had basically just done a search of her name on Google before, and I realized that her wedding pictures pop up on the first page. So here she was making this claim that her private life is private, especially in regard to her marital status and whether she's single and men, whether men should be proposing to her and you know how much she hates that but then it's obvious based on what she's put out there on the internet that she's married and then i also realized that in most of her videos she has a wedding ring on but yet you aren't supposed to know that and so i kind of challenged her on this and i said um you know all this is out there right and it actually started by some guy asking whether she was married, and I said yes. And then, you know, she basically didn't like that. And all it really boiled down to was, well, I'm not responsible for any of this. I'm not responsible for putting that out there. And she started shaming me again, just, just exactly like what a feminist woman will do. 
She basically said that, you know, I seem to know more about her life than she does. If I know that she's married, it's like, well, no. Here are your wedding pictures. Here's you wearing a wedding ring in your videos. Most likely, you're married. Anybody with common sense would be able to figure that out. But she couldn't have any of that. Because in her mind, the result that she wanted emotionally was, well, my private life should still be private, and so you shouldn't know that. And, you know, this is exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. She has made videos, and again, I'm not going to say who this is, showing that she under th understands things from a man's perspective. Showing that she realizes that feminism is not good. That a libertarian point of view on things would be a much better alternative in terms of getting the state out of marriage and all that kind of stuff. And yet, when you actually pin her down on something that she doesn't like, and you say, hey, you're clearly married, or you, at the very least, you were up until recently. So why is it that you're trying to have this big issue about how all this is private information when you've put it out there online, and clearly it's no longer private information, it's public? Well, the result that you get is shaming. The result you get is her emotions are her reality. And so, I, again, that was another example of realizing that even if you're not a chameleon, that doesn't mean that you're a nawal. Even if you understand things to an extent from men's perspective, that doesn't mean that you're in a wall. That doesn't mean that you're actually a higher quality woman compared to the average feminist woman in, in terms of her values, being consistent, using logic and reason. All of that can still go out the window whether she's anti-feminist or not. So the third and final example that I want to use is of broader context, and that is the anti-MGTOW female MRAs that you see from time to time in the manosphere. Now, I've put a lot of thought into this because on its face, it seems like it makes sense. You know, you have men who are MRAs, who believe in the men's rights movement and trying to make that succeed. And then you have men who are exclusively MGTOW because they don't see the men's rights movement as having any chance to, to be successful. So it makes sense from a man's perspective that some men are going to be MGTOW, some men are going to be MRAs, and some are going to dabble a little bit in both and be kind of on the fence in that sense. Or, or just be a part of both ways of thinking of, you know, I want the laws to change, but at the same time, I'm not going to get married, I'm not going to have kids... I'm not going to put myself in that kind of compromised position in life. So from a man's perspective, it makes some sense. I agree, of course, more with the MGTOW view myself because I don't think there is any evidence that men, the men's rights movement is going to succeed in any sort of substantial way. I think things are just going to get worse and worse for men, and men are going to have to look after their own interests and not consider getting married and having children and doing all that kind of stuff. However, from a woman's perspective, it's a little bit different, especially if you are a female MRA. Now, obviously, you can't be MGTOW because you're not a man, so you can't be part of men going their own way, and that's fair enough. You know, that's just true by default. But at the same time, why would you support men's rights but not support men walking away because they believe they're being exploited? So these particular women who are MRAs will, will say that MGTOW is just the other side of the coin from feminism. That they all have the same complaints about one another and that they don't want to work together to basically make society work again. Now, from a blue pill person's perspective, that might make sense because you don't acknowledge that men are at a disadvantage compared to women. You think that if you're a man or if you're a woman, you can get together, you can have a family, you can do your share of the work and reap your share of the benefits of the rewards and that if you're complaining about it you're part of the problem basically so you know they're going to view feminism as being bad and they're going to view MGTOW as the opposite of feminism in some cases and, and they're going to think that that makes sense because they really don't get it they don't understand what the family law courts do they don't understand that men are expected to live up to their traditional obligations and women still measure men by how much money they make and how alpha they are, 
but yet women don't do any of the things that they used to do in relationships. They don't understand that it makes no sense to have kids that you have no legal entitlement over, and so on and so forth. With the Duluth model, they don't realize that there's a call to the police about violence, about domestic violence. You're going to go to jail as a man if you live with a woman and if you're in that situation. So it makes sense from that kind of blue pill perspective to see feminism and MGTOW as opposite ends of the same coin. However, if you're a female MRA, if you're a woman who believes in men's rights, you are by default, by being part of that movement, acknowledging that men have a raw deal. You're acknowledging that the family law courts destroy men. You're acknowledging that, at the very least, feminism is not about actual equality. It's just about benefiting women. And because of that, or because of some combination of reasons that go along those lines, you have decided to be a men's rights advocate. So you realize what the situation is for men. But then when men say, no, you know, I've had enough, I'm not going to really advocate for men's rights, I'm going to do my best to have my own life where, you know, I I'm making good choices for myself, I'm not going to have kids, I'm not going to deal with women at all. I'm just going to focus on my own well-being and my own interests and the things that I find to be important. Oh, no. Now you're just like a feminist. So even though on one hand these women want things supposedly to be better for men, they are going to compare men who walk away from this kind of system to the feminists. That is like telling a slave that, no, don't seek your freedom. We're going to reform the laws so that slavery is not legal anymore, but if you escape from the plantation, and of course the plantation analogy is used within MGTOW and to an extent within the manosphere at large, if you try to escape from the plantation, you're part of the problem. You're just as bad as the slave masters. That is the equivalent of the argument that men who are walking away from their traditional roles because it doesn't benefit them anymore. It's not a mutually beneficial arrangement anymore. They get nothing in return for what they do. That is the equivalent of what I've just said about slaves. You know, the idea that, well, these men should just remain part of the system. They should continue to allow themselves to get taken advantage of. They should put themselves at risk for a domestic violence charge, for a false accusation in the workplace, all this kind of stuff. Not that that's completely avoidable anyway in the workplace because a lot of the time you have to work with women. But nonetheless, how does it make any sense to say that you care about men's issues but then chastise men for not wanting to be in that kind of vulnerable position with women anymore? You know, you acknowledge that the problems exist, but you don't allow men to prevent themselves from be basically being taken advantage of. The only explanation that makes sense is that these women do not care about men in themselves. They don't see men as anything other than a means to an end. Because if they saw men as being an end in themselves, even if society suffers, if they actually viewed men as being worthwhile in themselves, they wouldn't have the view of, oh, you need to remain a slave until we can fight for your freedom through the courts or whatever the case may be, you know, in some legal way. So the only explanation is they want a fairer deal for men, at least on the surface, so that men don't walk away, so that men will continue to marry women, so that men will continue to basically take care of society and run society to a large extent. And I'm not saying women can't contribute to that, but it is mostly a male endeavor. The only explanation that makes sense for why a female MRA would be very anti-MGTOW and see MGTOW as being just like feminism is because they don't want men to walk away from the system. They want men to remain part of the system so that society will continue to be propped up through men's hard work and through men sacrificing for women and all that kind of good stuff or bad stuff. And they're going to object to men not being part of that. So that's all it is. They don't care about men in and, of them, in and of themselves. They understand men's issues. They consider themselves anti-feminists and MRAs in the examples that I've used here. But they don't really care about men themselves because when men walk away, now they're just as bad as the feminists are, even though you know 
why it is that men no longer want to be part of this kind of system. So, while I don't believe that there's such a thing as Nawalt to begin with, I think that there are just better quality women, but it makes no sense to, to really, you know, a lot of men will say that there are unicorns out there. That, that doesn't really make sense to me, because you're going to just have better or worse quality women, just like you have better or worse quality men, the difference is that there are so few women that are of better quality. Uh, but I don't believe that Nawal actually exists. But there are some women who are of good character, despite our gynocentric culture. But nonetheless, most of the women who identify as conservative, libertarian, anti-feminist, or even pro-men's rights are either chameleons who... They really don't even understand feminism to begin with. They're just saying what men want to hear. Or they have their own reasons for opposing feminism based on their own personal goals in life. Based on their overall belief system. But just because a woman can understand how feminism is driving men away, why it's happening, doesn't necessarily mean that she actually cares about men in her own personal life or that she's a relatively good, intellectually honest, logical thinking type of character, like her, in terms of her values and her thinking in general. She may simply have a different strategy for achieving her goals and so doesn't buy into the feminist doctrine if it's not consistent with those goals. So, one of the major conclusions that I've reached in this video is that the only way to assess whether someone sees men as more than a means to an end, is to observe how she treats the men around her. Is she conservative or anti-feminist because she actually wants an equitable system for everyone? Or does she simply want one man to take care of her instead of men collectively, which would embody traditional conservatism? Does she identify as libertarian because she values everyone's freedom? Or... Is this because she genuinely feels like she can make it on her own and doesn't need a man in the first place? In other words, she really believes that she doesn't need a man and she doesn't need the government to take care of her either. Does a woman supporting men's rights do so because she recognizes men as human and worthwhile in themselves? Or does she realize that men are walking away from the current system and that a new deal must be made to keep men from leaving the so-called plantation? Only by actually getting to know women individually and observing how they respond to the men in their lives or just in any sort of difference of opinion that you have, any sort of intellectually on honest conversation that you may try to have with a particular woman, only by doing that can you assess their underlying motivations as an individual. In most cases, I found that women who identify as some form of anti-feminist are either feminist chameleons actually supporting the feminist ideology as far as its first two waves are concerned, or they have their own motivations for actually supporting a different ideology or worldview while being basically indifferent to the overall outcome for men. I believe that there are women who do reject a gynocentric approach and want fairness between the genders, but they constitute a very small number from what I've seen, even within the anti-feminist movement. Most of them either want to get back on men's good side, they don't want to be seen as part of uh, an ideology or, or a political movement that is going to drive men away, or, like I say, they have their own reasons for believing what they do, but seeing men as human beings I I at the same level that women are human beings to them is not always the reason. A lot of the time it's based on their own personal goals. So another conclusion to all of this is that the benefits of trying to assess whether a particular individual is one of the so-called good women who will see you as more than a utility puts into question whether this is even a worthwhile process. Like with relationships, men need to determine if the juice is worth the squeeze when it comes to assessing which women in the anti-feminist community are actually concerned with men's well-being versus the ones that just want to preserve their own goals or really don't believe what, they, what they're saying in the first place. In any case, it's wise not to assume that just because a woman gets it from a man's perspective, that that means she's of a higher caliber person 
than the average feminist woman. Because in a lot of cases, she just has a different strategy for trying to get what she wants. So ultimately, I would definitely say take what these anti-feminist women say with a grain of salt. See what's actually motivating them, whether they mean what they say, whether they can actually explain it in their own words, or even if they do understand it. You know, my thinking at first was that, well, if these women understand things from a man's perspective and they say they're anti-feminist, that that means they're on our side, so to speak, as men. And the reality is that a lot of them are on their own side. And this isn't just exclusive with women. You know, men, a lot of the time as individuals, are just on their own side as well. But in this case, as far as feminism and how it affects men on these kinds of issues, you've got to realize that whether a woman is a feminist or whether a woman is an anti-feminist, it doesn't mean that she is actually a better character. It doesn't mean that she actually respects men more. It can just mean that she has a different strategy for getting what she wants from men, and so she rejects the feminist ideology because it's not going to work for her. And so, like I say, you have to evaluate these women as individuals and see what kind of character they seem to have. But at the same time, whether that process is worthwhile or not is up to individual men to decide. And again, a lot of these women, even the women who supposedly get it from a man's perspective, they do so from the standpoint of a lot of the time trying to meet their own goals and not really caring about being intellectually honest or consistent or really caring about men, but really only being focused on what works for them and having the views that they have for that reason instead. And therefore, like I say, not really being of much better quality character in most cases, even though there are some exceptions, than the average feminist women.